Human beings are among the most recent creatures to appear on Earth. Scientists, called archaeologists, have found bones where humans once lived. One such scientist, Dr. Louis Leakey, discovered in Africa the skull of what may be man's oldest forerunner. Actually, human remains have been uncovered throughout Africa and Asia. The brown dots show where early African man lived. The green dots, Java man. And the yellow dots, Peking man. In Western Europe, the red dots represent Neanderthal man. And the white dots, Cro-Magnon man. Two important types of old Stone Age human beings. Scholars divide the story of human progress into several stages. During the Stone Age, human beings first formed families, then larger families called clans, and finally groups of clans called tribes. Later, tribes became ancient nations like Egypt and Mesopotamia. Scholars label Greece and Rome as the classical nations whose cultures formed the bases of the Western Christian world. The period of human progress from about 1 million BC to about 3000 BC is called the Stone Age because early weapons and tools were made chiefly of stone. The Dawn Stone Age was the first phase of the Stone Age. Many scientists believe that this is what Dawn Stone Age man looked like. He used rocks and stones as weapons and tools. To be safe from wild animals, Early families may have lived in trees. Some animals, such as wolves and giant cave bears, could not easily reach these heights. Eventually, Dawn Stone Age people discovered that fire could be used to scare away dangerous animals. The first foods early families may have eaten were fruits, nuts, mosses, insects, fish, and bird's eggs. Later, men killed animals with rocks and clubs to use the meat for food and the skins for clothing. In northern regions, glaciers drove out or killed many animals, so people suffered from hunger and cold. Thus, families were forced to migrate southward. Three times over a period of thousands of years, glaciers extended over parts of Europe and Asia. Each time, families traveled south. When the glaciers receded, many groups returned north over these same routes. By the time the last glaciers receded, human beings had learned to survive in northern regions. The glacial retreat marked the end of the Dawn Stone Age and the beginning of a new period, the Old Stone Age. The first type of Old Stone Age man to survive the glaciers in northern Europe was Neanderthal man. For greater safety, Old Stone Age families formed larger families, or clans. Scientists believe that clan members learn to communicate by attaching meanings to sounds. These people wore clothing made of animal skins to cover much of their bodies. Through the exchange of ideas, crude tools and weapons were developed. For example, the fist hatchet and the wooden spear aided Neanderthal man's progress as worker and hunter. By this time, human beings had learned to control fire, and now food was cooked more often than eaten raw. To obtain more food, men learned to cooperate with others. Because they often wanted more things than anyone alone could produce, they began to trade. Flint stone tools and weapons were sometimes exchanged for animal skins. The last of several types of European Old Stone Age men was Cro-Magnon man, who looked much like today's human beings. Cro-Magnon man was more intelligent than his ancestors and made better tools. For example, he developed the sewing needle and used bone as material for tools. When Cro-Magnon man lived in caves, he decorated his home with paintings and carvings. Sometimes he painted pictures of animals he may have seen. Pictures of bison were found in the Altamira cave in northern Spain. When Cro-Magnon man traveled to warmer climates, he built thatch dwellings. He learned many ways to start a fire, and so he became less dependent on nature by 4,500 BC, the Old Stone Age had drawn to a close. 
and the next stage of human development had begun, the New Stone Age. There were several main human achievements of the Old Stone Age. The discovery of fire and its uses, the invention and improvement of tools, the development of spoken language and group cooperation, and the initiation of elementary art. All of these achievements were improved upon by the people of the New Stone Age. created crude stone weapons and tools. Gradually, they improved these implements. By 4,500 BC, people were also changing their ways of life, from hunting to primitive farming. All this activity produced the so-called New Stone Age. During the New Stone Age, people's lives changed most in the Near East, especially around rivers and seas, in areas of Egypt, Mesopotamia, and Greece. Similar changes occurred in the Far East, also around rivers and seas, particularly in sections of today's China and India. New Stone Age man hunted. He set traps by bending young trees and tying leather nooses to their tops. When game, such as deer, stepped into these nooses and pulled on them, the saplings snapped back closing the noose and catching the animals. Scientists believe that from the bent sapling, New Stone Age man got the idea for the bow and arrow. This weapon was an improvement upon the wooden spear because it enabled hunters to kill game at greater, safer distances. Eventually, New Stone Age people learned to tame wild cattle, horses, sheep, pigs, and fowl. Our ancestors were then able to raise these animals for food, clothing, and work. For example, sheep were raised for their wool. And the wool could be combed and spun into thread for weaving warm clothing. When New Stone Age people discovered that grains and vegetables grew from seeds, they became farmers. Men and women cultivated the fields with the help of the animals they had tamed. Along with changing from hunters to farmers, New Stone Age people became better craftsmen and builders. By grinding and polishing flint, they made sharper tools, which made their work easier. To make weaving easier, bone and flint combs, spindles, needles, and crocheting tools were developed. Sometimes ornaments, like necklaces, were made simply for enjoyment. More often tools, like saws, were made to help people improve the quality of their work. With sharper saws, axes, and hatchets, trees could be cut down and shaped into usable items with less effort. Thus, hollowed out trees became log canoes and one of man's first means of transportation. Trees were later used as wheels and axles, making land transportation possible. In addition, trees were cut into lumber for wooden houses. Families built groups of houses or villages on lakes or in marshes to protect themselves from wild animals and other enemies. New Stone Age people also discovered new ways to use fire. They shaped soft clay from river banks into pots or bowls and baked these vessels until they hardened. Boiling food in hardened clay vessels made the food easier to chew and improved its flavor. Perhaps while hardening clay pots or boiling food, some new Stone Age human beings noticed that certain rocks melted. These melted rocks produced a soft, workable metal later called copper, 
The discovery of copper was an important step in man's progress as craftsman and builder because it enabled him to make even sharper, stronger tools. Along with developing new weapons, tools, skills, and crafts, new Stone Age people developed new customs and beliefs. Probably because new Stone Age farmers were still dependent on nature, they worshipped the sun as a god. But if the sun could help human beings by making crops grow, it could also hurt human beings by scorching the earth. If good spirits helped man, there could also be evil spirits to hurt him. Thus, people believe that sickness was an evil spirit's curse and could be cured only by magic. Sometimes human beings were sacrificed to win the favor of the gods. Besides these religious beliefs and customs, new Stone Age families believed in laws to rule and to protect their tribes. And so a father taught his sons to defend their families and to be loyal to their tribes. Toward the end of the New Stone Age, about 3000 BC, some of our forerunners migrated to Eastern and Western Europe, to areas known today as Greece, Italy, France, and Germany. They also moved to the Scandinavian countries and the Soviet Union. Others migrated to the uninhabited lands of North America, to areas known today as Canada, the United States, and Mexico. In North America, these prehistoric settlers, later called Indians, formed many different tribes and cultures. They built a variety of dwellings to suit a variety of climates. Indians succeeded in growing numerous foods, including corn, beans, and squash. They also tamed a few wild animals, including the dog. Dogs became household pets, protectors, and helpers in hunting. Even today, some people still live like New Stone Age human beings. While their numbers continue decreasing, they can be found thinly scattered within the red-colored areas on the map. Present-day examples of people who still live like New Stone Age human beings are some native tribes of New Guinea. A native warrior and hunter often carries a Stone Age axe. Some warriors decorated their axes with complicated designs. Tree roots are ground into flour with Stone Age mallets. A family meal is prepared with Stone Age cooking utensils. And trees are still hollowed out and made into log canoes. By 3000 BC, the new Stone Age culture had drawn to a close, and the next stage of human development had begun, the dawn of civilizations. There were several main human achievements of the New Stone Age. The change from hunting to farming, the development of sharp flint and bone tools, the invention of the wheel, the improvement of crafts, and the creation of tribes and villages. All of these achievements paved the way for the coming of civilizations. The ancient Egyptians were one of the first peoples to advance from the New Stone Age to build a civilization. They did this through imagination, organization, and hard work. Egyptian civilization grew up slowly along the fertile banks of the Nile River. The river winds its way northward through the eastern edge of the Sahara Desert. 
Ancient Egyptian history covers thousands of years, but there are four main periods. The prehistoric age, the old kingdom, the new kingdom, and Egypt's loss of independence. Egypt has long been known as the gift of the Nile because the river helped human beings to live in the midst of the desert. During the prehistoric age, farmers invented the shadouf, an animal skin bag attached to a pole and crossbar. The shadouf helped raise water from the river to irrigation ditches. But once a year, the Nile irrigated farmers' fields itself by overflowing its banks. So the Egyptians developed a system of simple mathematics to mark off new boundaries for fields washed away by the river's annual flood. In the meantime, early astronomers observed that Sirius, the dog star, always appeared before the yearly flood. So the astronomers used mathematics to develop a calendar based on their study of the stars. This helped them predict the flood season. Mathematics also helped early Egyptians become expert builders and engineers. So did their discovery that better tools could be made of copper. Also during this period, the Egyptians invented a system of picture writing called hieroglyphics. This system could be used to spell the names of famous Egyptians like Cleopatra. It could also be used to tell stories and to record important events. Later, the Egyptians drew their hieroglyphics on papyrus, paper-like sheets made from reeds which grow along the banks of the Nile. One of the reasons why historians know as much as they do about the ancient Egyptians is that writers patiently recorded the people's deeds on long scrolls of papyrus. Historians also use the development of writing to distinguish primitive cultures from complex civilizations. During the Old Kingdom, King Menes united Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt. Even though Upper Egypt appears at the bottom of the map, the area is called Upper because the land in the south is higher than the land in the north. The ancient Egyptians worshipped their king as a god. Each king was given the title Pharaoh. Pharaoh owned all of the land and divided it among his subjects for cultivation. Pharaoh and his nobles lived in beautiful palaces, while the peasants lived in dwellings of mud. The early pharaohs also forced their subjects to build pyramids, which were actually tombs. These tombs were enormous in size. For example, the Great Pyramid at Giza covers an area equal to 10 football fields and is as high as a 40-story building. These monuments are ranked among the seven wonders of the ancient world. The pharaohs built such elaborate tombs because they believed in a life after death. To make their new lives comfortable, the Egyptians preserved or mummified the bodies of their dead and buried with them food, furniture, jewelry, and sometimes toys. The pharaohs also believed that Osiris, the god of the underworld, weighed a soul's good deeds and bad deeds in a scale of justice after death. Between the end of the Old Kingdom and the beginning of the New Kingdom, Egypt went through several relatively uneventful periods. But gradually, through skillful use of the horse-drawn chariot, the Egyptians conquered their neighbors. By 1500 BC, the pharaohs established the New Kingdom, expanding Egypt as an empire. With the establishment of an empire, trading increased. Merchant vessels were constantly sailing up and down the Nile and into the Mediterranean Sea. Trade and commerce made the Egyptians wealthy and helped them to buy fine furniture, glassware, and pottery. These articles were sold in the shops of important cities. Egyptian women of the noble class bought cosmetics, jewelry, and wigs. The rich entertained lavishly in their palaces. And when wealthy people traveled, they were carried in decorated chairs by slaves. The rich also had certain religious privileges. Only Pharaoh and his nobles could make sacrifices to the gods. The poor were not even allowed to enter the temples. The temples were built in the post and lintel style. This means that heavy horizontal slabs of stone were supported by vertical columns. The Egyptians were the first people to use this type of construction with great knowledge and skill. 
The grandeur of temple architecture helped make the city of Thebes known as the pearl of the ancient cities. The suburb Luxor, as well as nearby Karnak, were also famous for their beautiful temples. On the inside, the temples were often as magnificently adorned as were the palaces of the nobles. By 750 BC, however, the Egyptian empire began to crumble. First, the Kushites, a proud people from present-day Ethiopia, conquered the empire. Next, the Assyrians, and then the Persians, both from Asia Minor, overran the kingdom. Then, Alexander the Great took Egypt from the Persians. He built Alexandria and its fabulous lighthouse, another one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. When it was conquered by the Romans in 30 BC, Egypt lost its independence for the next 2,000 years. Today, travelers to the Arab Republic of Egypt see only the remains of ancient Egypt. Among these examples of old Egyptian glory is the Sphinx, whose face may represent one of the pharaohs. Near the Sphinx is the Great Pyramid, which is the tomb of the pharaoh Cheops. Hieroglyphics can be found on the walls of several temples near Thebes. The temple at Karnak contains good examples of post and lintel construction. Columns which once supported a roof over the great hall of the temple at Luxor are still standing. Today, people can sail up and down the Nile, just as river boatmen have done for thousands of years, and can view the grandeur that is Egypt. But even more significant than these great monuments were the ideas Egyptian civilization passed on to the ancient world. Ancient Egypt made many important contributions to human progress. The introduction of mathematics. The creation of a calendar based on astronomy. The development of writing. The organization of a system of government. The improvement of engineering and the refinement of architecture. But other areas of the ancient world, like Mesopotamia, also made significant contributions to the growth of civilization. Mesopotamia, like Egypt, was one of the places where human beings first emerged from the New Stone Age to create early civilizations. Also like Egypt, Mesopotamian civilizations grew up in river valleys. The Tigris and Euphrates rivers form the eastern section of an area known as the Fertile Crescent. Ancient Mesopotamian history includes a variety of civilizations which took turns dominating the area. Old Babylonia, the small states, Palestine, Phoenicia, and Syria, the Assyrian Empire, Chaldea, and the Persian Empire. Between 4000 and 1700 BC, the old Babylonians established themselves in the Fertile Crescent. Without much wood or stone for building, they had to make bricks out of mud. With these mud bricks, the early Babylonians developed a new kind of wall opening, the arch. Using the arch, builders constructed storehouses for farmers' grain. These storehouses became trading or bartering centers for goods produced by other people. In this way, the old Babylonians made the Mesopotamian area into a main marketplace for the Fertile Crescent. However, the Babylonian builders devoted their greatest time and energy to the construction of temple towers or ziggurats, where local gods were worshipped. Whole walled city-states, like Ur, 
grew up around these ziggurats and the surrounding farmlands. But the most lasting achievement of the old Babylonians survived in written form. The earliest writing in the crescent, known as cuneiform, consisted of wedge-shaped symbols pressed into clay tablets. By 2000 BC, people in the Crescent were governed by a system of laws known today as the Code of King Hammurabi. The code was carved on stone pillars, sometimes with a picture of the standing king receiving the laws from the seated sun god. The pillars were then placed in temples for all people to see. Other remains of old Babylonian civilization included artwork, which often combined usefulness with beauty. Sometimes battle equipment made of gold looked like works of art. Between 1700 and 700 BC, the western part of the Fertile Crescent came under the control of various small states, including Palestine, Phoenicia, and Syria. These states were largely made up of people who had migrated to the Crescent from surrounding desert regions. The Hebrews, for example, were led out of Egyptian slavery to Palestine by their great lawgiver, Moses. The Hebrew people believed that Moses was given the Ten Commandments by a single, all-powerful God. Other religious teachers, like Isaiah and Jeremiah, gave the people of Palestine a set of moral values, ideas about right and wrong, and about good and bad. Over a long period of time, the words of these important teachers became part of the sacred book in the Jewish religion. Today, this book is called the Old Testament. Hebrew boys had to learn to recite the scriptures from memory. In their temples, the Hebrew people celebrated their past by offering sacrifices to their God. As with the old Babylonian civilization, large walled cities grew up around these temples. Under King Solomon, Jerusalem became the capital city of Palestine. To the north of Palestine, the Phoenicians occupying a small rocky seashore, became sailors and colonizers. They also became known for making purple-colored cloth with a rare dye from shellfish caught in the sea. Their neighbors, the Syrians, carried these and other goods to all parts of the Crescent. But again, as with the old Babylonians, Probably the most lasting contribution and record of the Phoenicians survived in written form. The Phoenicians developed their own alphabet. The Greek and Latin languages modified this alphabet until it developed into its modern form. Between 700 and 600 BC, the warlike Assyrians conquered Mesopotamia, held Egypt for a short time, and established their capital city at Nineveh. One of the reasons why the Assyrian armies were so powerful was that their weapons were made of a newly discovered extremely strong metal, iron. Feared for their cruelty, they destroyed cities and killed or enslaved their captives. And like the peoples who came before them, the Assyrian rulers built fortress-like palaces. Often, the gateways to these palaces were guarded by winged monsters carved in stone. Between 600 and 539 BC, King Nebuchadnezzar revived the power of the eastern part of the Fertile Crescent and established his capital city in Babylon. Babylon was one of the most beautiful cities in ancient times. It was surrounded by huge walls built with blue glazed bricks and decorated with pictures of mythical animals. The walls were so wide that two chariots could travel side by side across their tops. Processions entered the city through great bronze gates. Within the city were the Hanging Gardens, another of the seven wonders of the ancient world. 
The gardens were a series of terraces 23 meters high, covering an area of 120 square meters. Slaves took water from the Euphrates to irrigate the flowers and the trees. Today, little remains of Chaldean civilization, but the modern science of astronomy was given a start by the practice of astrology. Between 539 and 333 BC, the Persians established the most extensive empire in the ancient world. So vast was the empire that it was governed from two capitals, Susa and Persepolis. For better communications, the Persians constructed a network of roads and created a kind of pony express between Sardis and Susa. From all over the empire, conquered peoples travel the royal roads to pay tribute to their Persian rulers. One group of conquered peoples paid their tribute in gold and silver coins. This gave the Persians the idea to stamp their own coins for use throughout the empire. Today, travelers to the Middle East can see remains of ancient Mesopotamian civilizations. Winged bulls still guard the entrances to palaces now in ruins. A carving of a lion attacking a bull adorns the palace stairway. Statues of lions have been found on tops of palace pillars, but unfortunately, few such remnants of crescent civilizations have survived the sandstorms and wars of the Middle East. Yet, ancient Mesopotamia is remembered for its many valuable contributions to human thought. A code of laws, a belief in one God and a set of moral values, a forerunner of the Western European alphabet, a basis for astronomy, and a system of coinage. Many of these achievements were adopted and improved upon by the classical civilizations, Greece and Rome.